Good morning, uh, my name is Emil Kaim. I'm a Middle East Analyst at the IISS. Uh, we've been holding in the past few uh, days uh, a seminar on, on the, ge the geoeconomics of Africa, trying to understand uh, uh, the significance and impact of, of Africa's rise, economic rise, and, and uh, changes. Um, on the global scene, but also um, you know within within Africa, one dimension we uh, explored is uh, the growing relationship between African countries as a whole and the Gulf states. Uh, and uh, we have commissioned a paper by Michael Peel of uh, the Financial Times uh, to help us think through these issues. That paper will be available online uh, at iss.org. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, hi, Bill. How are you? Thanks a lot for your time and for your paper. It's a pleasure. Um, if you had to summarize the relationship between the Gulf states and, and Africa, um, how, what words would you would you choose? Uh, what, what's the uh, uh, what's the quality of the relationship? Well, there's a lot of excitement uh, about it, and um, a lot of people on both sides who talk about the importance uh, of it and the growing importance of it, um, but. At the moment, it's still very uh, uh, a very underdeveloped relationship. It's uh, quite uh, quite narrow, uh, quite shallow in some ways. Uh, although trade between um, African countries and the GCC has increased many times over the, the last uh, by, uh, ten years or so, uh, it's still uh, this is from a very low base, and it's still focused on the very traditional sectors. So. Uh, oil flows in, in one direction from the GCC um, and minerals and com other commodities, um, uh, labor flows from Africa to the Gulf states and I think the challenge now is to develop that relationship, um, make it broader um, and to make uh, both sides feel like they're getting something out of it but particularly to make um, African countries feel that they're getting something uh, more out of it than just being the subject of another commodities play after the West has come to take resources, China's interested in its resources, so um, there's a sense uh, in, uh, Afri among African commentators that they want something broader and bigger than that. Obviously there is a difference between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, at least from a Gulf perspective. There is a longer um, and denser relationship with, uh, with North Africa because of religion, because of politics, because of, because of ethnicity. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is a bit different. Uh, yes, there are religious ties, there are other ties, etc. Um, how do you, um, I mean, wh how do you think uh, Africans from Sub-Saharan Africa look at the Gulf as a place of opportunity or as a place that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just curious how, what you think is the perception? Well, there's a very rich history mm -hmm. between the Gulf um, and Africa and as, as two regional blocks and indeed uh, one theory of, of the development of, of humanity has it that um, the first people emigrating from, from Africa um, came across the Bab al to the, to the Gulf um, and you see this in, the, in the, 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 uh, the, the way the Gulf states are now particularly in a state like uh, Oman where there's a very obvious uh, African influence um, as, as well as uh, an, an Asian influence um, Clearly that's been uh, affected over the years by um, uh, slavery was um, uh, a, a rupture in some sense of, 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 of that uh, relationship. It wasn't just Europeans who were, um, who were taking slaves from Africa, it was, there were also Arab slave traders as well. And uh, one of the things that I think has to be overcome in the, in the relationship is, is that, that history. Um, uh, but uh, these days, um, I think as both regions uh, seek to um, have a greater influence in world affairs, as both have, um, although it varies, and they're both big regions, and so it's, it's difficult to talk about either as, as, as a homogenous block, but, but uh, in both there's a sense of rising um, confidence, they are emerging regions uh, economically, um, and particularly as the West uh, you know, lurches from, from financial crisis to financial crisis, that um, increases the sense that, that they, they are among the, 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 the coming countries. And I think that um, uh, it's only really over the last 10 years that things have started to build up again, but um, the relationships um, have concentrated on 
the sectors in Africa where everyone else has been interested, communications, um, consumer goods, uh, infrastructure, and Gulf countries have had a, a, a mixed record um, in, 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 in those investments. And I, I think that uh, for Gulf companies, you know, it's a big testing ground for them, whether it's uh, Etisalat in Nigeria or uh, DP World operating ports. These are um, tough working environments um, and uh, they're now having to, to, to compete in, in, in difficult markets and um, the, the question is uh, uh, how well equipped are they to, to, to hold their ground and to also to, to, for it to seem um, to uh, people within government and within wider society in African countries that they're offering something more than you know, the classic sort of imperialist model of just coming and taking large profits through providing a service in a difficult environment. Dubai has emerged as one of the key global hubs. Um, is it at all relevant to the rise of Africa? Is, is Dubai, because of geographical proximity or any other factor, uh, part of the Africa story today? Well, uh, some uh, people say Dubai really is emerging as a, as a financial capital of, mm -hmm. of, of Africa. Um, there's, for some time, there's been a large movement of, of people from African countries through here. Um, and increasingly um, uh, financial flows. Um, uh, whether that is African business people using Dubai as a hub, um, either to invest widely in the continent and to use, for example, the, uh, the good air links in Dubai, which can sometimes make it easier to fly from Dubai to certain African cities than it is to fly between those cities on, on the African continent, um, but also to be both a springboard for African business people um, wanting to do business in Asia, or indeed business people from Asia wanting to do business in Africa and using that equidistance. Um, and beyond that, there's the uh, very sizable number of um, workers in all kinds of I industries, um, for white collar and blue collar, who um, live in, in Gulf states, and particularly in Dubai, and who are sending back very large remittances to their home countries in Africa, which of course is a, a still a very important source of of, of, of revenue in, in, in South African countries. One last question. Um, perhaps the dark, the darker side of the Africa Gulf um, relationship. Um, we've heard a lot of complaints um, from from Africans about uh, the role of uh, Salafi networks in destabilizing uh, parts of the Sahel, Nigeria, etc. Um, you know, given the experience of Afghanistan and other places, uh, there seems to be a pattern of uh, Gulf funding fueling some of the most extremist elements, etc. Um, is this, I mean, given also what, what's happening recently in Mali, uh, Nigeria, other places, um, has this reached a critical level? Is this a, uh, is this a factor of tension in the relationship? It's clearly a concern, and, and when I lived in, in Nigeria um, between 2002 and 2005, this was a concern in parts of northern Nigeria, and people, very hard to get hard evidence on this, but people anecdotally said there was Gulf money, not necessarily government money, but money from the Gulf, which was um, financing um, the Wahhabi uh, um, clerics in, in northern Nigeria, and that was linked at, at that time. And, um, to, um, for example, the rejection of polio vaccination, um, which uh, has meant that Nigeria has become one of the, the world's worst uh, places for, 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 for polio in, in fa infections. Um, and clearly, um, there have been dynamics, uh, such as the, the Boko Haram group in Nigeria, which has been around for quite a long time, but has emerged as a much, much greater force. And, you know, Working in a in the northern Nigeria in a fairly remote part of the country, a lot still not known about mm -hmm. it. You know, to what extent is it a cohesive, coherent group? Does it? What to what extent does it have um, a clearly defined leadership? Where is it getting its its money from? But I think that certainly, whatever the truth, these are questions that are being asked um, increasingly by many uh, African commentators, and I think that part of the evolving relationship with Gulf countries uh, will, will depend on that and the Gulf states may come under some, uh, some pressure um, to, uh, to, to, to do something about this if they're seen as, as contributing to the problem or then if, if not then to say well this is not us and um, you, know, you, you shouldn't blame us for it. Thank you Michael. Uh, Michael Peel from the Financial Times, thanks a lot for watching.